Are you ready? Mm, test, test. So how does this work? Uh, wait, 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 the other way around. Yeah, like this. Uh, So, hey guys, today I'll speak about a problem closely linked to decentralized societies and our uh, uh, proposal how to solve that. Um, as we are on a cypherpunk conference, Bitcoin only conference, I believe that decentralized societies is something that we hold dear and we love, would love to see them prosper. As I, as I come from philosophical background, I'll uh, start with a philosophical entree. I'll speak about Karl Popper for a while. He's a well-known philosopher, probably best known for his definition of scientific approach, although his different philosophy is important for us today. Before Timothy Sime was even born, he was philosophizing about societies and described them as an endless quarrel between an authoritarian pole and an open pole, consisting of uh, freedom, plurality, and maximal personal responsibility. On past events, he showed that when societies incline towards the authoritarian pole even a bit, it always ends in carnages and complete loss of freedom. On the other hand, he believed, and believed as it has nef never be uh, happened before, that if the society would incline towards the open pole, uh, it would transform it into a plural entity where state borders become irre ir irrelevant and people would transact and interact in an anonymous manner. Now this sounds familiar, right? Because Cypherpunk did quite a rigorous work towards implementation of such a society. It was initiated by Timothy Sime, although uh, my favorite text that describes this problem come from Robert Hettinger. It's called The Geodesic Market. And although it's a 30 years, years old text, it still holds pretty relevant till today and describe uh, exactly how such a society would need to form and what technologies it would need to use, although some of those technologies are a bit outdated today. The conclusion, fast forward, is that those three philosophers and many more agreed on one thing, that in order for decentralized societies to prosper, we need two conditions to be met first that sample supplement each other. First one is that we need a free and liberal money and the second is that we need free and liberal reputation, and those two need to supplement each other. Uh, so money is already secured, we have Bitcoin, that's fine. But we cannot sleep on our laundrels, because reputation, not so much. And that's where we want to come in with, uh, with our project called Agra. So what is Agra? Well, simply put, Agra is a DAO framework. And by DAO, I mean true decentralized communities and not Ethereum shitcoin vessels. What we define Agra as is a group of at least three people that share a common goal. Um, those people, uh, I mean those Agras, uh, could be a spontaneous one-time you know, type of thing, type of organization. But sometimes those communities would, need, would, would want to continue existing. And for that, they would need an overarching entity that would help them with functionality, sustainability, while remaining in a decentralized, self-hosted, and federated manner. Um, so simply put, we are working on a framework that would enable those communities to form decentral to, to create decentralized governances, to help with, uh, with management of solutions for projects, organizations, companies, etc. What we want to do is to create a set of rules providing uh, generic functionalities, and I'll explain that in a wee bit. So the initial idea is to use Bitcoin as a time chain and, and to store hashes in it of those federated uh, communities and use something like RGB or Tora to, um, as a second layer to mint an NFT called Merit, which represents individual's reputation, and I'll explain that too pretty, pretty soon. So first, reputation, renown, respect, merit, those all are, from our perspective, interchangeable words. Reputation is a cornerstone of not only human societies since their beginnings. In fact, each of us use this concept of reputation every single day when we deal with other people. Um, 
But reputation has some rules to it in the physical world. And, it, and we need to recreate those rules in the digital space too. So first of all, there should be no central authority, no handful of users or no founders that should have the right to grant or seize reputation from or to a person on a whim. Another uh, consensus should always be reached first. Another rule is that reputation is always associated with a person in a physical space. In digital space, we want to associate reputation with a pop key, meaning that a, meaning that a single person could create many identities and verify those that he would want to. Uh, also, reputation should only be associated with that person or with that pub key, meaning that pub keys should not be allowed to transfer that token to different pub keys. Reputation can only be like born, minted, frozen for a certain period of time before, before a person can prove that he will do what he said that he will do, or it will be permanently burned if, if, if he fails to meet those conditions. Now, I said that we want to create a set of rules providing generic functionalities. Now, I'll explain that. Because when I say that for the first time, the first thing that comes to mind is something like a Chinese system. Now, I want to prove why what we are working on is nothing like a Chinese system. So, Agoras are completely voluntaristic uh, organizations built in a bottom-up process. Those set of rules, they, uh, basically, all the rules that we want to create are, can be toggled on or off in the name of voluntarism too. Meaning that if a community wants to get, uh, wants to get you know, created, born, it has to decide in advance what rules should they use. Now, there is only one exception, and one, one and single rule that can never be turned off is hosting. Because in a federated, self-hosted environment, without hosting, there is no, no thing. There is no community, because you only store hashes in the Bitcoin. So you need to have those data on your, on your nodes. So there are only, we want to separate reputation from money as much as we can. And there are only two rules that connect reputation to money. And bear in mind that both of those rules can be turned off if the, if the uh, community wants to. And I'll explain both of those rules because they're quite important. So first one is buy and don't lose me there. I'll explain immediately. The second one is opt out. So what does it mean to buy reputation? So imagine a community that needs some initial influx of money in order to function. What it, what it can do, what it can decide to do, is to, in exchange for donations from people, to grant them some reputation. So that would mean that the person who donated the money bought the reputation. But there are two conditions uh, that prove that this actually doesn't matter. The first one is that you can buy reputation, but you cannot sell it, therefore you cannot trade it, therefore you cannot speculate on it. That's the first thing. The second thing is that since the reputation is NFT, you always have the complete history of the deeds and actions that led to creation of that reputation. Which means that at any time and space, you can check how that reputation token has been minted so you would see which person has bought reputation, which did not. So for example, if you saw a person only has reputation that has been bought, now that person is quite suspicious. But if you saw a person that is, hardly that is very committed in uh, his communities, and on top of that, he donated some of the money in exchange for what he received reputation, now that's quite fine. No one would have problems with that. The other thing is opt out, which is our anti, uh, well, mitigation of uh, exploitation. Um, basically, a user could at any time decide to burn all of his reputation, and when I say all, I really mean all, you cannot do a partial burn, because partial burn would again be a speculation, like I have a lot of reputation and I need some money, so I'm gonna burn some of that reputation that wouldn't hinder my you know, ability to influence stuff in the community, and I would get money on top of that. So no, we want to block that. So, either, so, so this is really an anti-exploitation rule, that allows the user to burn all of, it, all of his reputation, meaning he burns all the bridges with reputation uh, with the community, and in exchange he receives uh, a appropriate portion from a communal Bitcoin pool, as most of the communities would need to have some funds, some communal funds. Well, physical verification is the origin of the peer-to-peer -peer bottom up process. Physical verification is, pardon me, Physical verification is, uh, is basically a cryptographic handshake combating a uh, man-in-the-middle problem. Now, uh, this physical verification is there to combat the most uh, 
uh, threatening uh, enemy to such systems, which are bot farms. Because a person could try to infiltrate the system by getting verification from one or two users, for example, you know, going to such a conference, and since he would get an access, he could create as many PubKeys as he would like to, and he would verify them in between each other. And thus he could uh, attack the system and try to, sibil try to sibil attack it. Now what, the verification, what this physical verification does is that if you have it, uh, you could see the bridges in between the bot farms and in between the real communities, because the real communities would have thick interactions with each other, and you would see few bridges that would lead to other like sub-community in that community that would be the bot farm that would try to attack it. This physical verification has many social aspects that we want to think about in the future. What we came up so far is some sort of delegation of reputation. We came up with uh, uh, with like declaration of trust, meaning that when you create this physical verification channel, you could put some reputation in it, stake it in it, meaning that when you would cut that verification channel, that's, that reputation would be cut. So that's sort of a declaration of trust, because the physical verification doesn't mean that you trust the person, it just means that you have met him and you know that he has a physical form. Um, as of now, we work in a trinary system, which means that either the channel exists, the verification channel exists, which is one, or it doesn't, which is zero, or from any party, it was disbanded, which is minus one, which sort of starts this like chain of distrust. Agoras are a completely proposal-based system, which means that all the reputation minting, all the budgeting, all the actions within those systems are done through proposals. Proposals are created using unique templates and they are basically smart contracts. Um, uh, what, proposal are, what proposals are for uh, are, is to store those actions that, had, that has happened in the Agoras to provide, well, basically explanation uh, and definition of how um, the, the reputation within the community has been created. It also is used for manifesting consensus within those communities and shape the ever-evolving paths of those Agoras. Some proposal templates require reputation freeze within them, such as uh, minting new reputation and disputing old proposals, which I'll, both of them will be explained pretty soon. So the proposal process is quite simple. First, you create the proposals, uh, proposal with all the necessary data in it, such as rewards, associated pub key, uh, budgeting, um, uh, utilized skills, deadlines, and so on. Then the voting is initiated and upon successfully reaching consensus, the contract is executed, and when uh, in a certain period of time the consensus is not reached, the contract is terminated. Now, this consensus is a fluid, ver fluid variable that can be set up by the individual communities and should be somewhere in between 51 and 100%. What is important is that all the proposals that has been successfully voted upon can be disputed in the, fu in the future, and that's what I'm going to explain now. Since I only have 20 minutes, I don't have time to explain everything that we came up with. But uh, when the communities grow a lot, we need some ways to, to, to layer them, because otherwise, if everything would be a whole community vote, suddenly you would not you wouldn't be totally disabled and you, would, you wouldn't be able to pass everything. So you need to distinguish those communities into separate sub-communities. Now, disputes are whole community, like agora-wide votes, uh, where you can dispute the proposals. Basically how it happens is that when a party, uh, a single person or a mul or multiple party, uh, finds proofs that something was done, something was, well, ill behavior, they can initiate a dispute by staking reputation in it. Now what happens is that if the dispute is successfully voted upon, then the reputation that was minted through that proposal is revoked or the budgeting that was supposed to happen through it is revoked too. Therefore, reputation is not a permanent thing, but it can be burned this way. Now, the basic idea is that winning parties should be rewarded because they have uncovered a ill behavior, while, win while losing parties should be penalized because they have either done the ill behavior or, um, it's about the, Oh, whatever. They have done the ill behavior. Yo, they wasted, they wasted time of all the Agra because you, you forced the Agra to vote on a matter that just wasn't there. So now, quick explanation of why we want to use NFTs. 
NFT is, 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 is a hashed metadata in time chain. It is by definition non-fungible, which is crucial for reputation, as I described, and they can be designed in a way which block pub keys from transferring them, which is also crucial for, uh, for reputation, as I defined it. Now, how does a new reputation get minted? Um, first of all, a founder proposal has to be has to be minted in RGB terms. It would be the single, the Genesis single use seal, which distributes reputation to first uh, to first members within Viagra, and it, it creates a proposal that incentivizes hosting. Because as I said, if there was no hosting, Agra wouldn't exist. Now, new reputation gets minted in a way that you need to stake at least the same amount of reputation into a proposal to mint it uh, in order to create it. Now, I don't want to d dive too deeply into that. If you want to speak about it, we can speak about it later, and we have other team members that are more into this topic than I am, so they can explain better. So in summary, we want to create a, a framework that would, that would help decentralized communities to, to, to manifest in digital space to measure reputation. Now, that's all nice and dandy, but what do we want to use it for? Well, I'll try to explain it on something that probably most of us know, which is BISC DAO and BISC Decentralized Exchange. So whoever knows how BISC DAO actually works, then you know that it works in a pretty similar way than I, that, that I just described. The difference is that in, in their proposal system, you need to put your Bitcoin into that proposal and then if the consensus is reached, it gets colored and it suddenly become a BSQ, BSQ coin, which, is more, which has more worth than the Bitcoin. But the problem is that this doesn't separate the reward from a money, which means that you can buy into the BISC system and you can try to buy a lot and try to influence that system. It, it doesn't solve the problem that was described in the beginnings, which are those two supplementing uh, aspects, which is money and reputation. And BISC knows that because in several texts that they presented, they actually mentioned that they know they haven't created, created reputation. Now what they think is that uh, Bitcoin community need projects like BISC, they need the decentralized exchanges, but those systems rather need reputation instead of money when you want to decide on a community matters. Because you don't want, you don't want to do the same thing that can happen in shitcoins where you can just buy in and influence it. Because you, because you have a lot of money. Now there are other um, use cases that I want to briefly mention. Uh, first one is journalism. Uh, uh, imagine a world where we could, uh, you know, quantify um, a uh, some kind of reputation number and add it to the sources and to the actual contents that try to inform us about something. Because fake news and disinformation is a huge problem nowadays, and we are kind of forced to you know, search the internet and trust, and basically only trust, but it's hard to verify. We need to find many sources, and if we had a reputation system, it would be easier to create personalized, per personalized feeds of information, and it would be easier to verify which information sources we could trust, because it would be easier for us to spread that message which sources are trustworthy and which are not. And the last uh, use case I want to mention is academia, as I come from a scientific space. Uh, whoever comes from scientific space knows how centralized jour journal works. Then you would know the scientific community creates papers, then people from scientific community reviews those papers, and then those papers are submitted in centralized journals that charge money from the scientific community that did all the work, which is complete bullshit and costs a lot of money every single year. Now what I believe is that if we had a framework that would incentivize peer-to-peer -peer actions, such as self-hosting, peer reviewing, and sharing scientific papers, and plus on top of that, we could have a better reputation system than just the, ci than just the citations which are prone to circle jerking, then a scientific community could benefit. And that's what I will be working on for the next three years uh, because it's the topic of my dissertation thesis. Um, but there are many use cases, and I'm not really sure uh, how many of them. Uh, th th there are just too many of them. And what we want you to, what we want from you, is to join the discussion and try to find the first successful pilot that is the most feasible and most easy and and the easiest to to create, because we don't we, we don't know. We are not sure yet. We just are working on a conceptual model as of now. 
let's create a decentralized society together, guys. I mean, it's no, there is no one that will do it for us. Uh, so on this QR code, uh, you can find a way how to join our Matrix self-hosted ser server. Join us there, join the discussions. We are prepared to host um, uh, English-speaking calls. So, so whoever is interested, whoever is, is as passionate as we are, you can join us. And also, if you truly feel like it, you can donate some of your Bitcoin uh, either through Lightning or on-chain. So um, that's it. Thank you for listening, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. We have time for one question. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Th thanks for the presentation. Sorry, I came in. I came in a few minutes late, so I might have missed the beginning bit. So, are you guys using uh, RGB as the, the base protocol? And um, uh, after this question as well, if you could elaborate a bit about how all these communities um, uh, may uh, interoperate with each other for data metadata. Um, can inter be interoperable between different platforms, um, and uh, yeah, that would be good. Good question. Um, first of all, we are still in a conceptual um, uh, creation of a conceptual model. We have no line of code, so as of now, we don't use any of those systems, but we know that it is feasible to use RGB, but we also want to investigate thoroughly whether it could prove to be useful too. So we have not decided yet, both are an option and the thing is that we need to decide which one uh, solves our problems the most. That is the first thing. And the second thing is that we think that as everything would be a same uh, free code, same uh, free uh, standard that could be used, then by definition the reputation would be, in, would be interoperable if those communities decide and chose voluntarily that it should be. But on a, on, on, on a technical level, they will be interoperable because you only use your pub key as your ID. So basically any application that would allow you to scan your pub key in it, then you could use that reputation in that application, basically, if it, if it decided to do so. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, oh my God, at the end, that was fast, two days. And uh, we arrive at the end of Sad Stage 2022. Uh, we, I have to, uh, the, the, the final words here, and um, I started saying that for me, 2019 was a change of uh, my life. Uh, in the last years, I lived few life-changing moments, but 2019 Baltic Honey Badger was uh, one of them, uh, a quite intense one. Uh, basically, at that point, I'm an architect uh, as a profession and I had a company. I'm neither of those things now. I'm, uh, I'm Bitcoin only and, uh, and I work on Bitcoin. And yeah, we have seen many presentations and some of them, they were talking about seed, uh, seeds, uh, Gigi was saying this famous thing of 12 words, no, to store your uh, your wealth and so on. So I, I think as a Baltic uh, honey badger, also as a seed, but as a seed that we all take with us, and it's gonna keep on growing from from today on, and it's gonna start growing. I think that the seed from 2019 is still growing. It's a quite a big tree now in, in me, but I hope that for you. Uh, this uh, 2022 uh, is, is going to be a very nice tree that you will be taking care of it. Maybe no, maybe you are not interested, but uh, I think that uh, with all the intense talks that we had here, it's uh, for sure going to be something like that. And uh, yeah, uh, aside from this, before leaving, I want to say thank you to all the volunteers, all the technical people and all the team that made this possible. And yep, right this very moment, Baltic Honey Badger 2023 is starting. So I'll see you there, and why not? Maybe I'll see you on stage. Thank you for everything, and thank you for coming. <laughs>